how does starvation uh, change brain energy metabolism? So we've known for years, uh, for many years, that fasting is a way to cure epilepsy. There's been reports dating back, this, is, this dates back to 1922, and I mean, it's going back to the time of Hippocrates in 400 BC. So fasting was a cure for seizures. It's been known for a long time. So much of what we know about fuel metabolism or brain metabolism during starvation actually comes from the work of George Cahill at Harvard Medical School. His group performed uh, really groundbreaking work to demonstrate that the brain can use ketone bodies as a source of energy. Prior to the study at Harvard that was done in 1967, it was thought that the brain could only use glucose exclusively as an energy source. So he did uh, a very interesting study where he had medical students that were overweight. They fasted for 40 days, and it was observed that their blood ketone levels after about a week skyrocketed and actually exceeded the levels of glucose. And essentially what he showed is that ketones become the predominant fuel for the brain and peripheral tissues during starvation. Starvation, not eating food, and have no body fat reserves for fuel. Fasting, not eating food while having body fat reserves for fuel. Today we would call the Harvard study a fasting study. In our fed state, if we're eating carbohydrates or a normal diet, about 100, nearly 100% 100 of our energy, brain energy, comes from glucose. But in a state of starvation, it's been shown that about two-thirds of our energy or even more, are, are derived from ketone bodies. So ketones function as an alternative fuel for the brain when glucose is not available. When given a choice of fuels, the brain prefers ketones over glucose. Dr. Ben Bickman. Ketogenic diet can mimic fasting in that uh, physiologically it can elevate blood ketones and lower blood glucose and you get a, a, a profile that's similar to a person who has fasted. So you really have to restrict carbohydrates and you have to eat a significant amount of fat to elevate blood ketone levels. Free fatty acids or fat from our diet and the mobilization of free fatty acids from our, from our adipose tissue, from our body fat, are processed in the liver through beta oxidation and form these ketone bodies. But we need to stay, we need to deplete the liver stores of glycogen to a certain degree and we need to suppress insulin uh, for the liver to be able to make these ketone bodies which are a very efficient high energy alternative fuel especially for the brain and the heart and also for peripheral tissues like uh, the skeletal muscle and the skin. When kids are uh, resistant to, to uh, anti-epileptic drugs or they become refractory to them, the ketogenic diet works when drugs fail. So it's actually become like the standard of care when drugs fail to treat uh, difficult seizures. And it's really grossly underutilized approach because it's so effective, but it's still uh, just because doctors are not educated in the diet and, and also with compliance, it's hard to follow. It's not prescribed too often annotated and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points. From the website doctorstotrust.com, you can view the summary notes and share or print the PDF of those notes.